my golf fanatics, it's Billy Ho here, and yes, indeed, the first major of the season. It's April. We head to Augusta, Georgia for the Masters, a tradition like no other. Uh, thanks for joining me as we uh, break down the Augusta National Golf Club, all the amazing nuances of each hole. Uh, we're going to go from the opening drive on the Tea Olive through Amen Corner, uh, that daunting par 3 16th. Hopefully we'll see some hole-in-one uh, action going on there. We're going to uncover the skills you need to get that green jacket. Uh, we're going to go over some stat models. Uh, I've recently made a change over to Fantasy National Golf Club. Uh, Moose, who runs it, gave me a, a really nice deal, got me back on the same plan I had uh, a couple years ago, everything was still there. All my old models had been a couple years probably since I've been on there. And uh, he was going to send me some swag to wear on the show, but uh, he didn't have my size. So I found this in like the pile of clothes. And I thought I started laughing when I was putting away my winter stuff. And I said, I got to wear this shirt. So shout out Moose. And uh, so uh, let's move on. Uh, we're going to be going through like DFS stuff for casual fans. Uh all kinds of stuff. DraftKings pricing is out. It's interesting pricing. We'll go take a look at that as well. Uh, very uh, interesting top five and six guys. And then the pricing on down. Contest is out. Billy Ho's Masters by Free Drop Billy uh, on DraftKings. 75 entrants and a five-way payout. So I think with the extra time, we'll get it filled up. And it's a really nice prize structure. I would like to start, but I would like to bump it more toward the hundred because I'm going to start doing some more golf content, uh, maybe two shows a week, uh, definitely maybe two, three shows for masters. So make sure you support the channel by joining the Gra DraftKings contest. Also check out the uh, horse racing content I got out, uh, Kentucky Derby, Triple Crown, all that's coming up. My playlist is loaded with videos to help you pick that winner. So subscribe, like. And uh, let's get it started. Augusta National Golf Club has a challenging layout, undul undulating fairways, strategically placed bunkers, lightning firm and fast greens. Uh, the course is par 72, does stretch 7,500-ish yards, uh, ryegrass fairways, pure, unadulterated, bent grass greens, firm and fast. It is going to be interesting. These players have been playing on this overseed stuff for probably the last month and a half. I can't remember the last time we saw bent grass greens, especially the pure ones like this. So uh, I would probably err on the side of the guys taking this week off and maybe getting out to Augusta early on and getting on the putting greens and getting reacclimated to the bent instead of playing all, all over this weekend, playing that overseed. But that's just a first one of the first of many thoughts I'll have today. So uh, the course begins with that uh, straightforward par four. You want to just get par and get on out of there. Then that lengthy dog leg left par five second hole. You could gr just grip it and rip it on uh, home in two type stuff. These par fives are attackable. Uh, that one's probably a must birdie hole. Uh, short par four is an easy wedge into a tiny green. Good opportunity there. Then you got four, four, five, and six are pretty difficult, long, bookended by tough par threes. Rest of the front nine, pretty challenging. Easy par five uh, when you make the turn. Then you got the back nine uh, hitting it far, and the water uh, risk is starting to come into play as you enter Amen Corner. Obviously, you know, Azalea and all those uh, holes. I got a, a beautiful picture on my wall of that par three over the water. I've had it for many years. Uh, one of my uh, first possessions I got when I bought my house years ago. But anyway, uh, middle part of the back nine is a uh, opportunity to score. They got the two par fives, the one that they lengthened, which it used to be, you know, you just whack out a three wood out there and then you were, you were going over the water. Uh, I believe that's the 13th hole. And then uh, you have that par three 16th I mentioned earlier if the pin placement is right, uh, I think it's, is it set either? I think Sunday pin placement is where you, uh, you get that. I remember Charlie Hoffman years ago, I won my first GPP on FanDuel. Uh, the year Patrick Reed won the masters, Charlie Hoffman made an ace 
on that and they used to give mad points for uh hole in ones and i i just uh won a bunch of money then so i have fond memories of that kind of stuff uh so probably uh won't get a good number uh on uh the hole in one in the books because there's always chances for all these par threes somebody's going to make a hole in one so it's probably going to be like minus 200 or something uh so anyway driving accuracy is important on 17 and 18 uh, but distance alone won't serve. Uh, and you'll hear a lot about driving distance, which I do emphasize that. We'll go over models. I got a bunch of stuff on Fantasy National I want to show you. So we're going to get into that. Uh, greens are deceptive, obviously well-guarded, generously sized, shaved. So you're going to be chipping up and down. Approach play is important. Uh, obviously not just proximity. You have to have the right, they call them quadrants. Uh, cause these greens are so big. You want to hit, uh, definitely want to be below the hole almost at all times, anything above the hole and you're really risking three putt. So, uh, that is always a threat course does demand a complete T to green game. Uh, so players that can navigate and avoid bogeys and three putts and all that stuff, big numbers also, uh, will get her done. So let's jump on the screen and take a look at some stats and players. All right. So the first thing uh, we, I want to look at is course history, uh, because, you know, if you're not aware, Augusta National is probably the most traditionally set up golf course that they'll play all year. Pins are always in the same position Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Players that have the most experience know exactly what shot they need to play from most positions on the golf course. They know which parts of the green give them the best chance to make birdie or the least uh risk at three putting so i do have some models and and actually i had some models that i made uh, a couple years ago that were still on here which is kind of cool to go back and look and see what you did uh in the past so what what, what i've been, have been doing is i got a couple main models and then i've got a uh mixed condition model i've been kind of tinkering with that we're going to look at too so this is obviously the course history i sorted it by total strokes gained and, you know, John Rahm's on top. He's got top tens across the board. He had a little bit of a bad uh, down year in 2022, but he bounced right back to win it last year. So nothing wrong with that. Scotty Tuhati, obviously a winner. Uh, he's got top 20s, top tens. He's going to be a threat. Hideki Matsuyama is back to playing some good golf, but he always shows up when he comes here. Uh, he is playing this week at Valero. So keep an eye on him. One of my Discord members, uh, mentioned the fact that he wouldn't be surprised if Decky had that old back thing flare up on him and, and withdraws this week so he can get over to Augusta and begin practicing. But I don't know. Maybe he wants to fine tune a few things. You never know. He might play nine holes and bounce. <laughs> you never know with Decky. But he's in good enough form to win this golf tournament like he did in 2021, striking it beautifully. Xander is playing. Uh, he missed the cut in 2022, but I don't even sweat that at all. He's got top threes. He's been a threat to win this. He's really good on these fast bent greens. And so he's definitely got his game in order. Cameron Smith coming over from the Live Tour, obviously a threat. He's been knocking on the door. He wasn't so good. So I'm, I'm curious to see how he performs this year because this was, I think 2023 was his first year coming off the Live Tour to play in the Masters and he wasn't as sharp as he needed to be. So Maybe he's been gearing up. I think he may have been not practicing as much coming into the tournament, and he just came in there and he, he you know, DJ the same way, DGAF, DJ, what I call him. Uh, he hasn't done much since he won it in 2021. Uh, he's a scary play. Patrick Reed's a dude. Obviously, he won it, but he always shows up to compete here, and he's always a good price. We're going to be looking at prices on these guys too, Brooks, uh, Brooks, the don't pay any attention to these two cuts here because Brooks had those knee surgeries multiple times. He had knee issues. One year, he probably shouldn't even have played. He was like bending down all crooked ways to, to read greens because he couldn't bend his knee right. But if you go back, he went bounced right back to T2 last year. Major threat to win this tournament. He's the kind of guy that I would roll out in one and done here. Uh he or you know any of the other majors he could probably be a severe threat to win the pga of valhalla also so he's a guy that i think just stays in peak form he's a very competitive guy jt 
struggle bus. Uh, he has had some good finishes here, uh, but he's been not playing very well. I think that's been well documented. He's up and down. Just when you think he's got it back, he just he can't putt. His putting is just atrocious. And that's one thing you got to have here. That's the difference between a T4 and a T21 is, is what will happen. He ain't going to probably miss the cut, but that's just no, no bueno. Obviously, Morikawa. I mean, I could go on all these guys down the road. Even Rory, even though he's got a couple of cuts here. And he Rory's not as sharp as he has been, so kind of tough to see. But you can see going down the line, the usual suspects are all here. So, modeling. This one here, I do believe, is just a general main strokes gain model. I just kind of went just a little bit evenly across the board. I threw in some par five. Uh, par fives are ultimately important here. Obviously, DraftKings points is too. The 10 to 15 foot range is the best birdie. Uh, I could throw in ops gain. I got birdie or better, T to green. There's ops gained. So the model rank, and that's my MCM is mixed condition model. So if you're not familiar with Fantasy National, you can make mixed condition models and you can go over here and uh, this is the right here and you just click this button and then it, you add an ingredient and then whatever you have loaded up like main strokes gain, it, it's going to give you those options and then you just click on whatever one you want. You want to start with strokes gained off the tee. It's going to add that and then it will open up and this is my main model. And uh, then it will give you a uh, percentage to do to. Uh, so just wanted to show you that right quick before we get into it. So model rankings, obviously. Uh, you know, looking down here, it's kind of crazy because all the top dogs, I mean, you got to go way down. The first guy I run into is, uh, is Siwoo Kim. Some of the other ingredients that I use in these mixed condition models, I like to have a little bit of peat dye influence his courses are designed kind of as a comp to me undulating fairways strategically placed bunkers challenging angles into tricky greens that's kind of how pete Dye does it so siwoo kim 7100 uh he's a guy that i think is interesting he's made six years worth of cuts he's got a top 12 he's actually been playing uh some of his uh coming in in good form let's put it that way if I can get rid of this, you can see 17, 6, 30, 44. Pretty good form here. Uh, the next guy I noticed was Chris Kirk coming down the line here. Uh, Corey Connors is going to be super popular, especially if he does well this week. Uh, EVR is going to be popping in your models. Jaeger, obviously, his, he's got his uh, chance to shine here coming off his big win. Uh, very reasonably priced at 7,100, and people will be on that. Uh, there's Chris Kirk, 6,900. You can see how good he's ranking in the model. Uh, and uh, there's a couple other things about him as well. Chris Kirk, he's made some cuts, uh, missed the cut here, but he's that's way back in 2016. You can see that, that he's kind of got back in form here, but this is the one I was the most important is since he sobered up, and got his game back. He's got uh, multiple wins on tour. 23rd last year in the Masters. So that's uh, he's an interesting guy to look at. And uh, he actually hits the draw off the tee, which you'll hear a lot of people talk about. Uh, right to left ball flight. So favoring lefties. So like guys like Bubba, even though Bubba Watson a little bit long in the tooth, Bubba makes the cut here nearly every year. He obviously has won this thing multiple times, but he hasn't really been quite as competitive as he's been in the last couple of years. He's mid forties, mid to upper forties. I really can't track his age, but I know he's at least 44 plus years old. So when guys start getting that old, it's a lot tougher, but Jack Nicholas won it at age 46. So you never know what can happen with these guys. He would be a fantastic story, obviously, and then this is the mixed condition model. And these were the the, the things that I will mess with. And uh, so strokes gained off the tee, I'm pretty heavy on. Obviously, strokes gained approach, I just did a standard. I didn't do any proximity buckets. I think I got opportunities gained. I got a little more emphasis on distance. I got some around the green, but you can see I got last 24. This is last 50. Putting, bent greens, 
firm greens and uh, different speeds. I did average to fast to lightning, I think. And it's going to be average. At, even if they get rain, it's still average speed. But if it's dry and they haven't had rain, uh, then it's going to be really fast. So I, I did that. Just a little bit of percentage there. Good drives. Uh, good drives are, you know, when you don't necessarily hit the fairway, but you get you make the green in regulation. There's opportunities gained. Obviously, birdie or better gained. Last 36, I put average to easy fairways and over 7,400 yards on the length. I did something similar to that with par fives, but I stretched it to 50 holes. And then I did three putt avoidance last 12 at Augusta. I thought that was kind of a, a, a cool stat to have. And then I can go through here and I can rank them, or I can you know go by who's been three putting the most. So Patrick Cantlay, there, there's one that's kind of interesting. Last three years, he's uh, been not avoiding the old three putts. So he's a guy to keep an eye on. Lucas Glover, Luke List, these are guys notorious. Obviously, Corey Connors, things of that nature. But there are plenty of guys to talk about, plenty of research to be done. Glad you're starting it out here with me. Hope you enjoyed the show. There's going to be more to come. Keep an eye out. Check out the horse racing content. And until next time, we will see you soon.